Uh, welcome along to our first episode of Leaders Eat Last. This video series is where we talk to exceptional leaders from our community who know that true leadership is where you place others before yourself and where you get more in return when you give yourself. Now leadership is the same no matter whether it's in sport, business or within our community. It requires a set of skills to bring people along for the ride. Now the set of skills that we're using for this video, video series is the Australian Institute of Management's seven skills of great leaders. And here today with me to talk about the first skill, strategic leadership and strategy, is CEO of Helping People Achieve, Tony Burns. Now Tony is an exceptional leader, a motivational speaker and fundraiser, and someone who gives more to our community than anyone I've ever seen. It's my honour to have Tony as our first guest on Leaders Eat Last. Tony, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you, Paul. It's great to be here. All right, so Tony, leadership can be a lonely place, particularly in the not-for-profit space. Now, what inspires you to be a leader uh, through those tough times? Good question, Paul. I, it comes back to the purpose of what you're about. I've been inspired for many years um, with people through my life that have helped me become a great leader. And I always felt that if I had that opportunity to have a position where I could be a leader, I would actually focus on those talents that I learned at an early age. So, um, you know, during the hard times of being a leader, you go through the ups and downs all the time. So the, the important factor that I've learned is having the real purpose of why you do what you do on a daily basis. So if you have that passion and that drive to push forward and have a key idea of what you're doing every single day, then that keeps you on the right track. Mm. And so that's the essence of strategic leadership, isn't it? You know, it's understanding your, your purpose. Yep. Now, what else do you see about strategic leadership is really important? Strategic leadership, I feel, is you've got to be a great communicator. So it's really important that you can communicate to your team, communicate to your stakeholders, communicate to the community, really about what you do and how you're doing it. And I think it's really about having a unique selling point. You know, if you have something that really brings you apart from the, the rest of the field, that can actually be a, a really positive influence going forward for your business, but also for your team as well. And, you know, HPA's got a really interesting history. We were talking about it uh, before. When you took over HPA, you changed its name within the first two weeks of starting. You know, like, there's not too many people in business who'd be as bold as that to change the name that would taken on uh, the role within the first two weeks. But you had a real purpose for it. So tell us a little bit about that story of HPA. Yeah. And why, why did you change that name? Yeah, it's, um, I love telling the story, Paul. You know, uh, the company, um, HPA, has got an amazing story. We started back in 1963. It was a dream from Harold and Peg Garner, and they had a child who had a disability, but unfortunately there was nothing in the Northern Territory for, um, for them. So they created Handicapped Persons Association. So back in 1963, that was, that was the right word to use. And over the, the years of the not-for-profit, for-purpose uh, sector, um, the company was changed to HPA, Disability Services. For a long time, the disability sector, um, and still to a point, has uh, unfortunately been put in the corner and hasn't had a lot of light put onto it, as much as it should have. So when I had the opportunity to come back to HPA and, and be the CEO, uh, true story, and within my first two weeks over half a glass of red wine, I came up with the, uh, the name Helping People Achieve. And it was really interesting because I knew I wanted to make a massive impact early on on my journey. And it's really great to see over the last two and a half years the transformation and the accolades that the company has got really from that transformation from that simple words to helping people achieve not focusing on disabilities but focusing on possibilities and that's been the cornerstone for our inspiration moving forward and um, yeah I'm very proud of that. And about having that that unique value proposition and just changing that mindset how's it managed how's it enabled you to grow the business as well? Oh, exponentially you know I came on board, I, uh, it was a massive step, me personally, going from what I was doing, which was in the, uh, the media marketing sector, um, having my own budget and just being my own sort of boss, mm. then going to something like this where I've had 100 staff, um, responsibility of huge amounts of people and um, a massive business. Um, but 
Not for one second, Paul. When I got the phone call saying that I was successful for this role, it was the turnaround for my life. I was, a, I was born for this opportunity. So I think taking that energy and exuberance and, and passion and putting that into an opportunity to make a difference um, has really driven me to continue to do that personally, but also through the whole business. And it's really made a big impact for everybody. And you know, you say that even though you, you can have that leadership and you know that you're born for it and you've got a vision and you're getting people behind you, there's still challenges as being a leader. Oh, for sure. And so what are some of those challenges that you've faced? You know, I'm sure that you had people saying it can't be done, you know, yeah. what you're doing here, it's, you know, you're wasting your time, you're wasting money, you know, it's just not going to be successful. What are some of those challenges and how have you overcome them whilst maintaining that vision and that purpose and that drive? It's, um, I've had a lot of challenges. Um, but one thing that I've actually learned over my years of actually in business, um, my background in professional tennis and, and learning how to have a dream and a goal and, and be really clear on what you want to achieve. Mm. Um, you're always going to get people out there that are going to try and knock you down or not believe in what you're doing. But I really feel that the cornerstone of this organisation needed to have a clear message. So once we had that clear message, it was really transformation that we actually push that positive energy out to the marketplace. You're gonna get people that have been in the sector for many, many years and saying, oh no, that's already been done or that's not possible. But I love having people that are doubters mm -hmm. because then that gives you an opportunity to inspire them and change their attitude. And you're not gonna get everybody on board. Mm -hmm. um, but the great thing about it is the people that you do get on board, that the ones that take you on that journey. Um, so it's really clear that if you're coming from the right place, from you know, right inside your heart, if it's going to make a positive impact, then it's the old saying, Paul, anything's possible. Mm. Um, and I truly believe that we're on a, a really great journey of um, transformation, not only for people in our business here, but the people that have been part of the journey for many years, the families, the community, the people that have been part of the journey of knowing HPA. Yep. Um, people come up to me, they see our logo in the street and they say, oh, thank you so much for making me feel, uh, making me smile and be happy. Mm -hmm. You know, so that transformation of changing people's attitudes about that is, um, has been really something that I've been proud of and, and so is the organisation. Mm -hmm. And so HPA is obviously, it's community focused, it's a for purpose, not for profit. Yep. Um, but you've managed to build a very successful business around, around that brand. So what's the strategy that you use to actually balance the both? Because that's a challenge within the not-for-profit is that they've got to answer to stakeholders and, they've, you know, and they can't have so much of a commercial focus. But sure. you've actually got a very commercial focus here about what you do while still serving your community. So have yeah. you balanced it? Well, it's, it's, it's great because we, um, being Australian Disability Enterprise, we've got the aspect of actually empowering our staff here. So they come here on a daily basis, they're learning new skills, they're new, learning new ways to empower themselves. Um, I tell people all the time, if you're having a bad day, if you come down to HPA, you feel like a rock star, you know? So that was really clear. When I came on board, the, um, the collateral and the marketing and the, uh, the purpose was lost a little bit with how we could actually tell our story on a clearer message. So to really get that really clear, to go out to the marketplace, to, because everyone, Paul, everyone wants to help people achieve. Yeah. Deep down, if you ask someone, if you want to help someone achieve, their first in, in, in instance is, I want to help people achieve. Yeah. If they're in trouble or, or if they, you know, you want to help someone across the road, you want to help them. You know, they drop their bags, you want to pick it up and help them. So that was really the, uh, the starting point for me to go, all right, the name, it says it all. But then we've got to do more about that. You can't just have a name. Yeah. It's not like Coca-Cola or, or or Virgin Airlines, you know, or NASA, um, you know, it, it's about having that essence of what you're about, but then you've got to be able to market that properly too. Yeah. So understanding that the business had been going for over half a century, mm. I knew that we had to really make sure that we had a clear message of being something that's fresh and new, but also at the same time, keeping to our purpose of what we're doing here on a daily basis. So you're right, having that community focus and making sure that we're really making a difference in that arm of the business, but also the products that we've created, which we've brought on too, we've brought some new lines of trailers and, and new products that we're thinking outside the square. Yeah. Because in this stone age, with technology and competition, you need to be different. You need to have that mindset of, how can we be different to the competitors? And at the same time too, Paul, 
we have to actually compete against profit businesses. So that itself has been a challenge for us. Mm. How can we get that market share? How can we better ourselves in front of um, our competition? Mm. And I think we're, um, we're doing a great job. You know, we uh, made a bit of history last year with the NT Telstra Business of the Year Awards. Yeah. Um, so we're doing something right, um, but we're always looking at ways to how can we do it better? And I think if you reflect on yourself, um, as a business and a, as an organisation and really look at how we can do things better every day, then um, it, it brings on success and opens up new opportunities. Mm. And you know, so that history that you talk about with the Telstra uh, business was so you were the first not-for-profit in the Northern Territory to win the business category of, of the Telstra business. Yeah, it was, it was an amazing journey last year. We, uh, we got nominated the year before, mm. and talk about disappointments and so forth. We got nominated the year before, and I knew the Telstra Business of the Year Awards was a, a successful, probably one of the best um, business awards in Australia. So to be nominated was really great. Mm. Um, two weeks later, I got a phone call from my account manager saying, sorry, Tony, there's no uh, charity not-for-profit section this year. So it was a bit disappointing, mm. but in a way, we just got onto business and kept going forward. Yep. Fast, fast forward 12 months, we then obviously Telstra opened up and we got nominated again. Mm. And this year, they last year, they had a, a charity section. Mm. So it was really empowering for us to put through this, the process. I don't know if anyone's out there that's done the Telstra Business Awards, I recommend it immensely. Um, the process of going through it mm. is huge. Yeah. The reflection on your business, um, the man hours that you've got to put into it, here at HPA, we're not top heavy with staff. Mm. So we've had to always, we're always juggling different things. So um, for us to commit to that, put our best foot forward in the application, um, and then last year, you know, to be at the award dinner and then win the charity one, which was, was amazing. Yep. But then to actually make history and be the first business in Australia mm. to win the overall NT Business of the Year, um, no charity had ever done that. Yep. Um, so for me, that's something that Personally, and from the business point of view, we're very proud. No one can take that from us, and uh, we're going. We will um, fly that flag for as long as we can. Yeah. <laughs> and it just goes to show, you know, that even though you're a, a not-for-profit, by having that clear strategic vision and a clear understanding of what your purpose is, that you can still compete. It doesn't matter whether it's in the not-for-profit or the commercial sector, and vice versa. If you're a business, yeah. you still need to have a clear strategic purpose about what you do in the world. Absolutely, you know, we, uh, you said it before, Paul, I don't look at ourselves as a not-for-profit anymore. Mm. I think the wording that I like to use, and it's more of a positive thing, is for purpose. Yeah. And I think that goes right through to any business out there. Mm. If you're for purpose, if you're a purpose of what you want, if you know, if you're a mechanic and you know exactly what you want and you're out there making a difference to compare to your competitors, then if you've got that for purpose mindset, then um, you're going to have a better chance of actually achieving your strategic goals. Mm. So just sort of touching on, on the people that you lead here, you, know, you obviously represent a part of the community that's often uh, misrepresented and underrepresented. What's the biggest lesson that you've learnt about leading people with a disability that you think can be applied to just leading people generally? Absolutely. I, uh, it's two things, Paul. Mm a passion and a purpose. Yeah. We all want that. Every single person in the world wants to have a passion mm. and they want to have a purpose to make a difference, I believe. And from my experience through HPA and the team that I have that come here on a daily basis and you know, they're my inspiration. You know, disabilities has had a stigma for many years. Um, my calling is how can I actually make a difference to break that stigma down? focus on possibilities and achieving instead of disabilities. Mm. You know, some of my staff come here and they've been dealt a really hard card. Yeah. But how come they can come to work every single day and be passionate, can be happy, mm. they want to make a difference, you know, mm. they leave here excited about coming back the next day. Mm. And so I feel honoured that I can actually have the opportunity to lead such an amazing company. Yeah. And to see them grow as individuals into greater individuals, mm. for me that's um, really a blessing and um, something that I'm very proud of. Oh, look, I think it's an absolutely amazing organisation that you've got here, Tony. Um, I, I thank you very much for sharing uh, your, your knowledge and your experience and your, you know, just those 
those little nuggets of, uh, of gold uh, in there. So thanks very much. Now the question that I like to finish and I want to finish with this here is what's, what's a book, website or a person that you follow that you think that people out there need to know about and need to go and investigate a bit more? For sure. Well, there's a couple. I'd like to give a, a couple because um, there's a movie out there. It's called Rudy, R-U-D-Y. Um, and it's uh, something that's really empowered me many years ago. Um, a dear friend and mentor of mine, John McLean, he's got an amazing book out there. It says, How Far Can You Go? Yep. So um, that's, a, that's a great book. And on the business sense, um, Alex Maley, who uh, he's got a book called The, uh, the Naked CEO. Yep. Um, he's uh, got some really great tools as well. But um, John McLean's book for sure, 100%. And, um, and if you want to get the old school Rocky Three out there, that's always <laughs> gives you a bit of uh, eye the tiger. You've got to have that in life and in, 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 in the business world, but also in yourself. So, um, you know, shoot for the stars and um, anything's possible. Tony, thank you very much. You're an inspirational leader. Uh, you've set the bar extremely high for the rest of our uh, <laughs> speakers on Leaders, uh, Leaders Eat Last. And thank you very much for being generous with your time today. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. And uh, I look forward to presenting more of uh, my amazing network uh, with you in this series. Uh, make sure that you like us on Facebook and sign up uh, on my website uh, to make sure you keep up to date with the next videos coming out. Make sure you get the next video. This guy's awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Cheers, guys.